and then here you get tension. So now we got some tension, right? And then we get release again. And that's what jazz is about. It's yeah. this kind of ebb and flow of tension and release. So it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Hi, I'm Jay Roberts. And I'm Brandon Bellini. And welcome to RMI Jam Tracks Connected, a video series where we showcase our latest backing tracks. Come hang with us while we jam, tell stories, and talk music. And make sure you subscribe down below so you get the videos as they come out. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another RMI Jam Tracks Connected. Yes, sir. We got a great one for you today. This is our 251 backing track that we've been uh, working so hard on, and we've been having lots of fun playing over it. It's a uh, really great track because it's uh, it's about the building blocks of jazz. Uh, 251s are are the the essential pieces that build up most jazz charts, and if you focus on these 251s, it's going to be a huge head start into playing jazz. It really is. It's... Um... As you mentioned, it's the building blocks of jazz, yeah. and uh, you know, as we we understand that rock and roll in blues is based a lot around one four five, yeah, and four five one, and so forth. Um, jazz's equivalent of that is two five one. Yeah, right? that's right. That's right. And so, every standard that you will ever play has a bunch of two five ones in it. Yes, in varying yeah. different keys. Sometimes you'll have two five ones that bounce around to different key centers so it's not always the key center like say if the song's in c major you might not just see the two five one of c major you might find two five ones in lots of other keys maybe f major as well and 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 things like that but what we're going to focus on today is just playing over a single key of two five one and some of the that's fun things we can play over it that's a that's a great idea in fact uh one of the previous tunes that we did uh, autumn leaves yeah it yeah. starts it starts off with a two five one it i sure don't know does. that we mentioned that no, but it, I guess we did. it was like a minor seven is the two d9 is the five and G major seven? That's right. Is the one that means we're in the key of G major and we played uh, G major scales and E minor scales over that, mm -hmm. didn't we? Yep, that's right. So today we're going to play uh, in the key of C major two five one. So that means we're going to start with the D minor seven, the G seven uh, to uh, C major seven. And, you know, we, we are adding some extensions on those chords, right? Sometimes. Nines, 11s, and 13s. But in the beginning, we're not going to add any alterations to the five chords. So we're going to play it really inside, meaning uh, we're going to stick really close to the C major scale uh, as much as we can without deviating, uh, adding too many uh, chromatic notes and passing tones in there. Sometimes um, it's hard <laughs> to avoid uh, uh, avoid those is. notes when you know how to when you know use how to them. Do them you it's want to it's use what them. you want to play, but uh, we're we're gonna try and do our best to stay inside it first. And yeah, uh, and so you know how we've kind of started. Yeah. We're doing this kind of level one, two, three thing. Uh, this level one, we've always kind of started with a pentatonic approach, and mm. I think we can still look at that. Um, sure. Uh, but since the one chord is uh, C major, that means C major pentatonic, and it's relative minor. Uh, a minor pentatonic. That's right. So we, we kind of like to start here as it's familiar to lots of people. You know, lots yes. of people have played that. So here's my C major up here. If I want to consider that, or A minor here. So I can solo in that, and believe it or not, I can just play bluesy licks and rock and roll over, uh, over jazz as well. Uh, I mean, lots of guys do that, and they, and they sound really good doing it. Yeah. Um, traditionally, however... You know, jazz guitar takes it to the next level, to where there there are more color tones involved than than just what's it. Yeah, what's it and we're gonna about. make it to that today. We're gonna get to that toward the end of the video. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, you want to just do some bl some blues pentatonic. Let's see what it, it sounds like, man. Let's see what just All our right. pentatonic over these two five ones is gonna gonna sound like. You ready? All right, let's do All it. All right, let's kick it off. Take it away, Jay. All right. <laughs> Uh oh, 
Chromatic, yeah. Well, breaking stick. the rules. <laughs> it's hard, I'm telling you. Yeah. I put a little blues note in there. Yeah. You did a little flat five? Yeah. Okay. No problem. I think that's safe in this uh, first level to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing is, you know, we haven't really talked about neighbor notes yet, mm. but, you know, every note in any given scale um, has a neighbor note that's a half step below it. So that means if, this, if these are my scale tones that I, I'm playing with, that means I can go down a half step and go back up. That's so cool. So that gives you a, a kind of a way to sound a little jazzier, but still having a, a pentatonic approach, right? Yeah, so we're just like playing the notes of the scale and then playing its note that's below it and right back up for each note. Yeah. So instead of... Yeah. Gives a little topsy-turvy feel. I like it, that. It, it really gets nice. a outside. And you don't have to think too hard about it. You're just you really using the don't. guitar. And you use the same fingering, using too. Using the same finger. So he's not even changing fingerings on that. Um, so that's a, another way that you can spice up a pentatonic and kind of get into a jazz realm a little bit. That. So, now, there's one other approach that you can do, which is really pretty. It's also, um, it's not it's not fake jazz, but it's <laughs> it's a way to, you know, you can even fake yourself out because you can it can sound pretty good. Um, <laughs> You can, uh, you, if you play the pentatonic and then you fill the notes in the middle. Mm, that's right. It's like, you know, people call this the box pattern, right? So if I'm playing the box pattern and I play the notes in the middle. I love that. You know, in other words, I'm filling in the notes between the lowest finger and the highest finger on every yeah. string. I think something important to take note there too is you do want to get to the right notes as the landing place. Good point. You'll notice if you stop and stress the sound of these wrong notes, it might not come across the way you intended it to That's be. when they actually yeah. become wrong notes, actually. That is probably right, <laughs> yeah. That is when the wrong notes happen. But if you play through them with a target that is a correct note, so if I go, oh, got it. there's my correct note, I'll say I'll target this one here. Next yeah. phrase, I'm gonna try and target that. So I might go. Nice. Perfect. I can get away with a lot if I just stick the landing on one of the more uh, uh, correct tones. And we're not really dealing with any theoretical stuff right now. We're not. We're not talking about the names of those notes, the the uh, numbers of those notes, and the alterations. Believe it or not, we have a really loose term for that, and we just call them passing tones. <laughs> passing tones. I like that. And we're just passing from one place through the passing tone to the next place. And another thing is, you yeah. mentioned a landing. Uh, also, if I have a starting point that's inside of this scale system, mm. and then a landing point that's also inside, mm. um, it gives it a... Uh, uh, it gives, then you have true, true passing tones. Now here's an example of not a passing tone. Ooh, okay, it went it flat. It was so bad that the whole track got it off. It killed the whole track, man. <laughs> so yeah, I, I just landed on a note that was just outside. Now, right. you're, when you get into like the advanced jazz level guys, they get to where they like that kind of sound and sure. they like target those outside notes. You know, That's and, right. And you've heard guys that do that and they it's really cool sounding, but you almost have to adapt and get a palette for it. Like That's a, right. a taste for that sound. So right now we got a, a rock or a blues player that can kind of stick close to his, his what he knows and play over 251 still, right? I think that's great, yeah. That's a really approachable way to um, to get your foot in the door with these these jazz tones. And, and then it just goes from there where we're going to start incorporating other sounds and incorporating, uh, you know, uh, really planned out scale tones and 
targeting specific extensions. So I go, oh, I'm playing yes. the sharp nine of the five chord. And I, you got so it. it goes, yeah. it goes many levels deep. But you can get a lot of these sounds just with your ear and using some of these passing tones. And then you're really still playing kind of from feel. You're not, you're playing by ear and by feel, and you're not yeah. really dealing with a theoretical analysis at this point. So I think that's good. I think that's really cool. I think the next level. Um, just playing over this basic track is to consider um, what we call a diatonic scale. That's so right. instead of a five note scale, you know, this is the the regular major scale, you know, do, re, mi kind of a thing. That's right. right. You know, now we have a seven note scale and this inherently will sound a little a little jazzier. I think so, yeah. So, and we've yeah. all heard that. And, you know, there's obviously there's different fingering patterns. Play whichever ones you're comfortable with. We're just staying here for, for you know. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and switch out of this pattern here that we've yeah. been using. I'm going to, pattern three. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and move up to pattern four. And so C major here. Okay. And so here I'm going to go ahead and still the same scale, same seven notes. If you're not familiar with this one, check out uh, Sound of Music. <laughs> Do a deer. That's the one. Uh oh, copyright strike. We oh, gotta calm down. Gonna, oh, Only ten seconds. Calm down. Yeah, yeah, ten yeah. Sec, under okay. ten <laughs> seconds. All right, good. <laughs> Gonna get sued over here. We gotta watch out. Okay. So uh, that's it. And so we're. I'm gonna solo out of that. And I'm. Yeah. I'm still gonna use uh, the neighbor note idea and uh, possibly some chromatics inside of there. Yeah. But you know, I'm already up to seven notes. Seven out of the twelve possible notes that I can play. Anyway, yeah. so yeah. why don't we uh, jam over that? Let's see what that sounds like, man. All right, here we go. Why don't you go you ready? for it, man? You am, got I, it. am I kicking this one off? Kick, kick it off. All right, here we go. Diatonic scales. I'll use that yeah. same pattern, too. take the, se the scale and sequence it and while it is a, a, a scale exercise which is good to learn you can actually get music out of sequences kind of like yeah, this no doubt. that stuff anyway and so you know some cats are like yeah don't play exercises don't you know don't play scales and exercises to learn how to improvise you know they, they say yeah you yeah. got to do this other approach the issue is you've got to get your fingers and your nervous system trained to where you know where the notes are in that scale fingering pattern and to do that you've got to run through several of these uh, sequences and scales to to get comfortable so that you can then play by feel yeah, and by your ear. your ear takes over at one point. You play those things enough times to where your ear goes, I want to hear this tone now, and your muscle memory is going to grab that note. That's it. So it does take a lot of training, and there is some, it's a little dry for a while because you are doing these run-throughs of these sequences, and it's very mechanical and very a little mechanical. less musical feeling for the practice part portion of it, but you got then that it. changes over a little bit into more music when you have those tools in your tool shed and you I can build whatever you want. So agree, you know, and you we we're talking about uh, neighbor notes. So if I mm. play this scale, Ooh, I like that. with a 
neighbor note on every other note. So on the first note, and then not on the second note, but I'll do it on the third note, and not on the next note. So I get, whoa, I gotta try that. Yeah, there you go. I like that a lot. That's a it cool starts one. to almost, almost sound like music. Not quite. <laughs> It's, but you can see it's kind of leaning that direction nice. because it has organized, uh, it has what they call melodic force. It's a mm. term my dad used to talk about. So the idea actually, um, it has a, a melodic force in line logic. It has logic to it that um, you, it has a power of its own. Wow. And so that's a, that's a big deal, you know. Um, and if you, a lot of classical music has that in it all the time. Yes. So like it, yes. if I look if I apply the sequence a really, really basic third sequence like this with a neighbor note. Oops, sorry. Wow. You hear guys like do that a lot. Like guys like Methania are really yeah. good with like neighbor notes and scale yeah, sequences. Pat Martino is one of my Martino's of that. awesome. Can do that, that forever. So we kind of got a little jazzier um, with just some drills and some scales, you know. So, but you know, my question is for you. Yeah. How did you learn to play like that? <laughs> how did I <laughs> learn to play like that? Yeah. Oh well, you know, I what? had a great teacher, you see. <laughs> An awesome Wait teacher. a minute now. You can't blame it all on the teacher. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do remember the day. Um, yeah. I was a student of Jay Roberts in the very beginning. And, um, How and old I, were you then? I think I was 22. Oh, it's something 22. like okay. that. Yeah, yep. yeah, 22. And um, I had some background in music already. I had been playing. I went to the Las Vegas Academy of Performing Arts. I was a guitar yeah. major there for a year, and I learned a lot about classical music and mm -hmm. how to read classical music and mm -hmm. things like that. That was really, really helpful to get me started. And we did do some jazz in that class, although it was more mm. focused on classical and guitar ensemble. But um, we did learn wow. some some basic, like, you know, one, six, two, five, although I didn't know that it was called those numbers yet. I didn't gotcha. know the theory behind it. Gotcha. And I was in a really uh, cool position when I was in college. I was taking my, my music theory classes on classical music in the college. And then I wanted to do jazz guitar, which wasn't really offered at the college. Gotcha. And so I... Was got a great recommendation to go check out Jay Roberts and Roberts Music Institute, and uh, well, they I even said you... I kind of looked like him too. I said, well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you guys are gonna get along just great. You got to go down there and see Jay Roberts, and yeah, I went down there and uh, and I remember showing you a song that I wanted to learn. It was a jazz song. I think it was Round Midnight. Oh, that's right. And I'm going. Well, this is kind of a. A somewhat advanced yeah, tune. Yeah, it was a little ambitious for me to start with that one. For a beginner yeah. jazz guy. But yeah, you dove right in. And I remember your mom coming in. And then, oh, and yeah, then yeah. I realized that your your mom uh, is a professional jazz singer. Right. And I'm going, yes. okay, there's some some of that's in the family history. And then later you told me that your dad is a professional jazz drummer. Yeah, yep. my parents both met at Berkeley College of Music. I'm they like, were in a band Whoa. together. Oh, I'm like, where okay, I came from. so you, you had some, uh, it was in the upbringing there for yes. sure. And then I think uh, you probably only took lessons for a year or two, or I don't remember. Do you yeah, remember? I think it was a year and a half or two years. And Something then, like uh, and then I, I remember uh, asking you one day, uh, I was teaching some kids at, at the college, just some of my classmates, and I didn't know what I was doing too much. I was just starting out, and I said, Jay, could you help me? teach me how to teach man can you give me some yeah, pointers on how to right, do this right. and uh and you said you're you're right at the age man you're what 20 23 24 <laughs> yeah you're you're you're, you're it's time for you to start Prime teaching time. so you and started I remember you gave it. me a student gave me one yep. student and then uh and now I'm the rest I'm, is history man yeah now I'm running what like 30 students a week something like that yep. yeah and and you uh you taught at our our, our my facility in Bellevue mm -hmm. for what 10 years 10 years yeah yeah that's right and now we're at the new new facility yeah, that's that's a wild story, man. So and, cool. And uh, but I remember you you telling me in that yeah. first lesson. Well, I had these two these chords that would move, and I'm going, what is what is that happening there? And you said those are two fives of separate keys. I didn't yeah. understand that a a jazz song can move from different keys all around and how and, and how they were changing keys and you said yeah. oh that's a two and a five I said oh that's a two five oh that's a two five of the key of a flat oh but then it moves here 
Well, that's a 2-5 in the key of G oh. now. Okay, so I can play my A-flat major scale over these two chords, even though there's no A-flat. It's just the 2 and the 5. Yeah, it's a 2-5 anyway, two five, it, two five that doesn't go to 1. 2-5 right? that doesn't even go to 1. So identifying those 2-5s was a huge, huge step forward for me in my playing because yeah. now I can go, oh, I know what key these two chords are in. And I know what scale I can play with that if right. I'm improvising. And now, oh, there's the melody going right in those keys. So oh, that's that where that theory sense. started to kick in. And, and yeah. you were definitely ready for that because you're already burning on rock. And I was playing. Stuff. I was a metalhead. You're a metalhead, and you I already had all the chops and stuff. <laughs> and and uh, and you could play by ear well. Yeah. You could sing well. Uh, this guy's an awesome singer, by the way. Oh, thanks, man. And, uh, I mean, anything from Frank Sinatra to Ronnie James Dio. So you, you tell me <laughs> what's in the middle between those two. I don't know. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah, can imagine. I don't know. But everywhere in between, right? I, I try and I like yep. to stay uh, rounded with all that. It's yeah, fun. It's, it's Keeps pretty it cool. interesting. So, yeah, then when you went, got into the theory, then we started – be able to tackle the analysis. That's right. I remember I got through, and I think the magic number is around 10. 10 jazz standards you have to do a lot of intensive study on. Yeah. But then with those 10, you pretty much have all the patterns that you're going to see for all, you know, 2,000 jazz standards that are out there. Isn't that true? Yeah. I remember HR telling me, uh, or not me, he was doing a clinic. He used to do these uh, seminars all over the um, country, really, before uh, GIT started back in the 70s, and some guy says, uh, how is it that you know so many tunes, so many jazz tunes? He goes, oh, I really don't know any tunes, you know, per se. Um, and everyone's like, what? no, that's a bunch of bull, you know. So uh, wait a second. How come you can just pick up the guitar and play any jazz? You know, someone calls a tune, and you can just start playing it. Uh, well, he goes, <laughs> this is the funniest thing. He goes, they're all deep purple. <laughs> everyone went, what? <laughs> and deep purple. Deep purple. Wait, wait. Well, you know what that is. <laughs> Explain this to me. It's what? uh. Wow, we got to that in the yeah. jazz class. We just played deep purple. Yep. That's awesome. That's man. awesome. I'm so excited. We, he, and so his idea w- w- was, and I totally agree, is that um, just like rock and roll, you have just a handful of real. Uh, basic and cliche moves that are used all the time, like in rock and roll, right? How many times have, have those three chords yeah. been used for millions of no rock doubt? Tunes? And he says in jazz, it's the same thing: two, five, one in this key, and then two, five, one in this key, and then two, five. You know, then <laughs> next thing you know, you're playing giant steps. It's just all two, five, ones, and nice. and you and then you memorize the relationship of those keys so right right it just everyone's just like what that's yep. so cool man that yeah. is awesome <laughs> deep purple i love that yeah, i'm gonna a, use that it's now. an awesome that's one everything's mine. deep purple. <laughs> <laughs> i don't think this guitar's ever played anything like that before. <laughs> <laughs> well i tell you what i think it'd be fun to go into the next level on this 251 yeah. thing um in fact do, do you need to cue it up on there yeah yeah i'll cue it up while you talk about it a little okay here. Yeah, sounds good. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to deal with the next track that's called uh, 251 Altered. Mm-hmm. And what this means is that the, the, two, the, the, the five chord here has an alteration in it, which means instead of just being a G7 or a G13 or a G9, uh, which are extended chords, uh, it's going to be an altered chord, which means it has a G7 sharp five or a g7 sharp nine or flat nine in this case sharp nine so there are all these cool color tones that happen and uh oh, a few tracks back we talked about the right wrong notes with uh one of our tracks yeah the altered scale the altered scale yeah mm-hmm. so that that comes right into play really quickly into yeah. jazz and that's what makes it sound um more advanced and and uh, not just a pentatonic scale anymore. So uh, what we're going to do now is play some ideas over this G altered chord, which is the five chord. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, this is a huge subject. Sky's the limit, right? That's right. That's so right. So we're going to just kind of start off easy with that. We're still going to use our C major scale. What should we do for our first alteration? What do you want to... 
how, what would you like to do? You know, I like to do. Th- oh, there is so many. We could <laughs> go over a book this thick on all the different things that are, are possible to play over alter dominant chords. But mm-hmm. um, I think a good approach for the first one would be just playing the the parallel minor key. Perfect. So instead of C major, we're gonna play a C minor scale. Believe it or not, just right mm-hmm. over the one chord or the five chord. I should say five. It's called the five. Uh, yeah, over so one of the chords, like? which is the five chord. So here's this sound. Ready? This is. Gives you a lot of the. And then it resolves. Yeah. So we have to pop back into C major. So we yep. can only play that C minor and get away with it over the G7 altered chord. Beautiful. And, yeah. and without going into all the theory of what the which accidentals are, are being played and, and alterations are being played, uh, that we're just going to take this kind of basic approach. So it's still kind of entry yeah. level in the sense it's C major over the first chord, C minor over the next chord. Pentatonic works great too. I pentatonic. can just use my C minor pentatonic. And then resolve. And there's the resolve. Let's do that because this is a really good entrance. I think. I think that's a, a great that's, one. That was a good, great choice of. Uh, yeah, I think that's a really nice one to start out with. Parallel yeah, major minor. I like it. You going for it? Sure. Take away, Jake. So this is C major. Here we go. Oh, it sounds so nice. Luscious. Minor. You can't play, that's heavy metals. You can't play that stuff in jazz. That was the, that was the last track we did. <laughs> so now I'm just thinking like a C minor pentatonic. Why huh? not? So I'll use my full major scale, C major yeah. pentatonic. Then resolve. Oh, bend into the third, I like that one. to get introduced into that slightly outside yeah. sound. Huh? Beautiful. And then oh. resolving. It's about resolving. That's the most sure important is. part. Sure is. Awesome. I'm gonna do that, but this time I'm gonna integrate some of that, uh, some of that interval and neighbor note stuff that we talked about earlier. Mm. But I'm gonna do it with these two uh, scale systems. I love the bluesy thing; it just really brings some soul into it. It's not too heavy theory. We're not thinking about this too academically. We're just pretty basic introduction into it, and then we're still using our ear to get the tasting yeah. sounds out of it. Yeah. Um, now, if we want to go to the next level, you know, let's to take it there. Just do it, and let's go ahead and make it this G7 as altered as we can possibly get it. So, there's a sharp five, there's a, a sharp nine, a flat nine, a flat five. Flat five. We want all of those notes contained in one scale that's gonna throw the kitchen sink at it. Throw the kitchen sink at it, like you said. Yeah, exactly. Heck yeah, so what's a good scale? Maybe a A flat melodic minor? A flat melodic minor, yeah. Yeah, but you notice you started on a G note. No, oh, I did, yes. You sure did, because the chord is G, but the scale is A flat melodic minor. Right. So we start on the seventh degree of that scale. There's all kinds of names for this as well. We don't want to confuse you with all the names. Unless you, of course, unless you want to be confused, and then we, I'll tell you that you know it's we, super, super low, low grand, 
then, yeah. <laughs> the altered scale. The altered scale. What are they called? Uh, 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 Diminished whole tone scale. Diminished whole tone scale. <laughs> so many scales. Yeah, melodic minor scale up a half step. So that's why you guys, yeah. you know, that are, are intimidated. And if you want to get really deep, there's more melodic, there's five melodic minors that we can play in place of that G7. So yeah. let's try this out. Let's go A flat melodic minor, but then on the next pass, F melodic minor. See, I told you this guy gets heady, man. I don't know where he got all this. He learned all this crazy. <laughs> Mr. J. Roberts, man, <laughs> the best teacher in town. You couldn't be? Well, let's. You want to so you let's yeah, play so over got, this? Play altered. That was my A flat. Now you go for an A flat. Nice. I'll try an F minor, F melodic minor next. So that's a good one. That is fun. So the alteration stuff is really fun. And believe it or not, that's uh, where jazz players like to spend a lot of their time is figuring out how to play cool outside ideas over the five chord. And then on the two chord and the one chord, play relatively inside stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that that gives us this um, inside, which is... Uh, uh, release and then here you get tension so now we got some tension right and now we get release again and that's what jazz is about it's yeah. this kind of ebb and flow of tension and release so it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing it's the most fun you can have in music i think it in my really opinion. is in yeah my humble opinion <laughs> I, I agree with you you know it, it's it's really true not that other style, styles are less valid. Not at all. Yeah, um, you're right. And, you know, I mean, I like double bass as much as the next guy and tapping, I, although I can't, I don't know how to do it, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's all that thing. But, yeah, I think, I think this keeps my brain engaged so intensely because I'm always thinking about crafting this line and trying to wiggle my way out of the harmony and or well i shouldn't say it that way but outside of the traditional harmony yep. and back inside to the that's it. landing that resolve and it feels like i'm i mean it feels like i'm skiing down a mountain or something i can't even explain it. i just have this uh it's it's so fun to me to, it's so to do cool. this yeah. yeah and you're really good at doing it by ear like try, making it yeah. making it musical so what happens as we learn more scales and arpeggios and licks and yeah. drills we get all these chops together well, the thing is it doesn't automatically mean that you're going to be able to play music <laughs> yeah that's true right <laughs> you know and it, it's a it's kind of a it's kind of rough you know so uh, because what happens is the guitar starts playing you mm, that's yeah. a great it, piece of information you know there. it really wow. does and you just start playing these things you're like oh g7 altered oh i can do this 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 and this Next thing you know, it doesn't really sound that great. I mean, it sounds academic, sounds smart in the in the sense of that it's academic and that it's technique driven. Yeah. But it doesn't sound like something that you will remember as soon as the guy's done playing the solo. You don't remember anything that he played because it, there was no n nothing really musical. You need where, some substance, right? Yeah. Like so you're really to... good at like figuring out how to get weave in and out of altered sounds without making it sound too heady. And so that's. Yeah. Jazz is, you know, that's a thing about it. It's it's a kind of academic in one side of the brain, but then yeah. it's also music feel and flow and heart right. and all that it's stuff. It's a perfect balance between all of it. It has to be a perfect balance between chops and your and your you know and knowledge of the music and all that, but also feel and heart and groove. Absolutely, and all that is is it has to be in equal proportions all together. Okay, to let me hear best. all the licks you got over G seven. No, just kidding. Come on, <laughs> jeez. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> all three of them. No, okay. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So cool. Hey, this, this is a blast. So fun. This is great. Another fun session, man. I know awesome, we, we did more talking than playing, but uh, 
We, it's as a matter of fact, we'll uh, go ahead and do some more of these uh, solo tracks over on the other channel, on the Jay oh, Roberts yeah. channel, yeah. and we can just listen to some blowing and and hear some of these concepts applied there as well. It's awesome, so. man. Another great one, Jay. Cheers, man. That was fun. Thanks, everybody. Take it easy. See you next time. Bye.